What up everybody? Instructor Beats back again. Here with our dividing a whole number by a non-unit fraction using models. Let's check out our objective today. All right, our objective today. Today I will be able to divide a whole number by a fraction by drawing an area model. All right, so the difference between this lesson and maybe the previous one you watched with unit fractions is our fractions we're going to be dividing by today will not be unit fractions. So it is just taking that next step uh, and pushing our math brains to the next level. However, we still need to understand what's happening when we divide. So when we divide, we answer one of these questions. We're either answering, okay, how many are in each group? Okay, so I, there are 12 apples. You're going to put them into four baskets. How many are in each basket? Or you're going to be answering the question, how many groups, right? So you have 12 apples, you're putting four in um, each basket. How many baskets do you need? So let's take a look at those visually. All right, so we just kind of talked about this. Let's say, and I love my part whole tape diagram I'm gonna use. Let's say I have 12 total apples and I'm splitting them into four groups or four baskets, if you will. So here are my four baskets. And you wanna know, okay, how many are in each? Well, obviously that question mark would be three. There are three apples in each basket. So I should label those as my total, all right? So sometimes they give you a set amount of groups, four groups here or four baskets, and you're trying to figure out how many are in each when you divide, right? We have the total dividing it into our groups. Sometimes though, they want you to know, okay, how many groups can you make? So again, we have 12 apples. We're still doing 12 divided by four, but now instead of knowing that there are four groups, we're gonna put four apples in each, right? So, okay, how many groups or how many baskets would you need? The answer is still the same, right? These are supposed to be equal, but I'm not a great drawler. So you would really need, our question mark would be three here still. So 12 divided by four is still three, but depending on the word problem, you could either be doing partitive division or quotative division, right? And today it's going to help us to understand this. So here's our I do problem, okay? Uh, we have three holes and we're gonna divide this by two fifths. Now, Larry's friend has a message for us. And really what he's trying to say is we are going to think about division as how many groups when we are solving these problems. So just like I did for my uh, unit fraction video, we're gonna draw out our three holes, okay? That's step number one, there we go. And again, these are one, right? So we're gonna have three of them because we're starting with three holes. And then my denominator here is five, so I'm gonna split each of these into five equal groups, okay? Or I'm going to try to split them into five equal groups. There we go. All right, so we know we're thinking about division as having two-fifths in each group. So here is one group, right? Here's two-fifths. And our question's asking us, how many groups of two-fifths can I make out of three? So two-fifths is one group, again, because we're not doing the unit fraction. We have two, that's our numerator. That's why I know two. And so I'm gonna keep making groups of two-fifths and see how many groups I can make. So right here, this would be one, and I kinda get, gotta come all the way over here, okay? If you're doing a, a fraction model, it'd be easier if there wasn't space here, but I wanted to show you the space so you can kind of visually see the whole split up. So that's two-fifths. Here's another group of two-fifths. Here's another group of two-fifths. All right, here's another group of two-fifths. Here's another group of two-fifths. And then we're gonna have a remainder right here of one-fifth left over. So our whole number, right, how many groups did we just make? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I know that I'm going to have seven holes. So that part isn't much different from the unit fraction, right? That's pretty easy. But what do we do with this one leftover piece? Okay, here's really the important part of this lesson. <laughs> you're not going to pay attention to anything else, pay attention right here. All right. So I have one piece left over. Okay. Now, some people would want to write seven and one fifths. And that kind of makes sense because, right, you have one out of five left over. But that, in fact, is incorrect because our groups are made up of two, right? So if we have one left over, that is one out of two two, that's one half of a group. So my answer is seven in one half. So three divided by two fifths, you can make seven groups and then have one half of another group left over. So seven and one half. Let's name the steps that I just did. 
All right, here's Shockey to help us out with his steps to divide whole numbers by a fraction using an area model. Thank you, Shockey. He kind of just cut me off right there, didn't he? That's kind of rude, but that's okay. I'll help tr uh, translate for you, Shockey. Number one, draw the area models to represent the whole, right? I drew my three. Number two, use the denominator of the fraction to split each hole into equal pieces, right? So my denominator is five, so I need five holes in each piece. And the number three, count how many groups of your fraction that you created. I can make seven and I could make one half of another group. So my answer is seven and one half. Let's do a we do problem together. This is a great time to remind you that if you need notes, there are guided notes in the description of this video. So you can go ahead and open those up, print them off, or just fill them out, make a copy, fill them out on Google Docs. But let's do another one together. All right, and I'm actually gonna use a fraction model for this. So in, instead of putting the spaces between each hole, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw this out. There we go. And I'm going to um, make my four holes kind of connected to each other, okay? So there you go, there's a hole, and then there's a hole. So here, right, just, and I'm gonna kind of just put a little number line underneath here just so you can kind of see. I know I didn't put the spaces here between these, but that'd be zero and one, right? This would be my, Number uh, number two, all right, and then here we have uh, our fourth one right there, okay? Um, and then my denominator is eight, so I wanna split each of these into eight groups. Now, typically, you wanna try to do it vertically if you can, because uh, that makes it kind of finding those groups easier, um, obviously, but because I only have so much room and eight is uh, quite a lot, I'm gonna split each of my holes into eight pieces. There we go. Um, and if this is kind of confusing you to have the holes next to each other, you can still put a space uh, between them just like I did with the I do problem. Um, I just really like using uh, bar models, tape diagrams when I can. Um, and then I also want to be able to count my pieces next to each other instead of having to skip the space like I had to for that last one. All right, so here we go. We have each hole split into eight total pieces, uh, which gives us 32 total pieces, if you want to know. Um, and now I want to make groups of five. So I'm going to go ahead and just number them, one, right? One, two, three, four, five. There we go. That's going to be my first group. And I'll even circle it like this. Perfect. And that's why it's actually easier to do this vertically if you can, if you have enough space on your paper, because then your groups kind of aren't crooked. You can kind of very clearly see them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'll get a different color. Here is my second group right here. All right, there we go. One, two, three, four, and five. There we go. There's my third group that I can make of five eighths. Again, we're thinking about division as how many groups of five eighths can we make? Get purple out here. So one, two, three, four, and five. There we go. Here is my next group of five. I'll just start back over with red here. One, two, three, four, five, there we go. There's my fifth group of five eighths. Now I just did red for my Delta ladies out there, okay? I work with several Deltas. I would do a pink for my AKA ladies because I work with some of them too. They get very upset when I only do red, but I don't have a red pen, all right? So we're just gonna pretend uh, like there's some pink on here so people don't get upset with me, all right? I love both the Deltas and the AKA, all right? Not picking favorites. Here we go, and then here is my sixth group of five eights and then I actually have two left over so I have six holes and then I kind of have these two remainder right remainder one pieces now remember um, so my numerator is going to be two right because I have two parts but my denominator is not going to be eight my denominator is how many are in each group so here right I have five in each group all right so my leftover fraction is going to be two over five because my group if i had a full group would have five in it but i only have two so my answer for how many groups of five eighths can i make out of four i can make six whole groups and then two fifths of another one all right let's go ahead and do this you try problem pause the video try it yourself draw out your models uh, see how you do it and then push play to check your understanding so hopefully you just paused it now you're checking it out um, i'm gonna do uh, six holes there we go that's step number one. Step number two, each of these should be split into four pieces because the denominator of my divisor or my fraction I'm dividing by should be four. There we go. Split each of these into four. All right. And again, I want to make groups of three. We're thinking about division as 
if I have three fourths in each group, how many groups can I make? So because they're kind of next to each other, I can go ahead and circle three and I can even number them right here. That's my first group. Here's my second group. Okay, I'm gonna actually have to cross over and that's okay, right? So there's my second group. My third group, see how nice it is when you can just do them vertically and just kind of count them side to side is my third group here. I have my fourth group, perfect. I can do another group of three fourths, which should be my fifth group. All right, then I can have my sixth group. So if you look at this, it's the exact same thing we do with unit fractions in our previous video, except now our groups are bigger, right? We can have two pieces, three pieces, eight pieces, 100 pieces in our group. So here would be my seventh group. And this one actually works out perfectly with no remainder. You can make eight groups of three fourths. Okay, so six divided into uh, three fourths in each group will give us eight groups. All right, so hopefully you got that one right. If not, go back, rewatch the video, check out um, our unit fraction video if you need to take a step back. If you want a shortcut, you can check out our keep change flip video or our finding our common denominators video. And as always, check out all our Instructor Beat songs. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there's lots of different options online. We appreciate you spending your time with us. We'd love for you to hit that subscribe button to join our Instructor Beats family. Like it, leave a comment, let us know where you're watching from. Again, thank you so much. Instruct them beats out.